The F-22 is an air superiority fighter with advanced thrust vectoring capabilities. The aircraft was a result of the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program and entered service in December 2005. The Raptor has been the most sought-after fighter in the U.S. Air Force due to its unmatched agility, firepower, and stealth capabilities. Out of all, thrust vectoring makes the Raptor stand out as it levels up the fighter, making it a formidable asset. Today, Intellect will take you through all that you want to know about F-22 thrust vectoring. Let's begin. Simply put, thrust vectoring is adjusting the direction of the engine exhaust to support maneuvering. Before we get into the real meat, an understanding of the Raptor's engines will lay a sound foundation. The Raptor receives its power from two F-119 PW-100 engines. This is a low bypass ratio engine that comes with an afterburner. The engine has a counter-rotating spool, or in other words, the low pressure spool and high pressure spool are rotating in opposite directions. This could result in an increase in engine performance and better vibration control, making the fighter super responsive. In addition, the first stage blades of the fan are made hollow to reduce weight and chop down responsive time to facilitate sudden throttle movements. It is clear that Pratt & Whitney designed the engine while keeping thrust vectoring in mind. The engine is optimized in every possible way to support agility and the fast response of the fighter. Now it is time to get into thrust vectoring. The F-22 Raptor is equipped with a two-dimensional thrust vectoring nozzle. In simple words, the nozzle could move only up and down to vector thrust. If it could move sideways to the left and right, it would be 3D thrust vectoring. In the F-119 engine, the nozzle moves 20 degrees up or down to vector thrust. Any position within this 40-degree frame is possible, but the pilot does not have direct control over thrust vectoring. There are no switches or levers to adjust the thrust vectoring angle of the nozzle. Thrust vectoring has made it an integrated part of the flight control system of the fighter, and it kicks in with demands for certain maneuvers by the pilot. Thrust vectoring could increase the roll rates of the fighter by almost 50%. While the benefits of thrust vectoring become evident throughout the flight envelope, it could dominate the sky when it comes to a dogfight. The basis of dogfighting is maneuverability. The aircraft with great agility has more opportunity to win a dogfight as it can attain a favorable firing position before the enemy for a first kill opportunity. A fighter involved in an aerial engagement could use thrust vectoring to maneuver within the turning radius of the opponent, as the aircraft with thrust vectoring has the smallest turning radius. In addition, thrust vectoring could be used to maneuver the aircraft in low-speed and high-angle attack conditions. As flight control surfaces become ineffective due to separation of airflow at high alpha flights, engine thrust can be used to maneuver the fighter as it is not affected by the aircraft's attitude. Hence, thrust vectoring is used for maneuvering in post-stall regimes. High alpha loop, Pugachev's Cobra, and the J-turn are some examples of demanding maneuvers that require thrust vectoring. On the other hand, thrust vectoring comes in handy when a fighter is operating at higher altitudes. As the air is thin at higher altitudes, the effectiveness of control surfaces reduces drastically. To maneuver the fighter, larger-than-usual deflections are required at high altitudes, which introduces more trim drag. But with the use of thrust vectoring, the fighter could maneuver without excessive flight control surface deflections. It is quite obvious that thrust vectoring embellishes the F-22 with super maneuverability, even at flight envelope extremities, where most of the other fighters find challenging. This marginal advantage could be used by the F-22 pilots to outmaneuver the opponent and gain a favorable firing position during a dogfight. And that's a wrap for today's video. We hope you enjoyed this episode and there are more videos coming, so consider subscribing to The Intellect. See you next time.